Hi guys, hello another video for you, some content on Valve's Steam Deck. Now what I want to do is an overview of how I use mine. It's been personalised for myself, my friends would say it's been honoured. I'll do more videos in the future to show you how you can do this stuff too with your Steam Deck. Uh, but we'll break this video down with timestamps in the description of the video and a pinned comment below to help you find your way around. So before we get into all the cool stuff, I should probably explain what the Steam Deck is ever so quickly. You should be able to make mine out in the top right hand corner of the screen. It is a portable gaming PC. It is not a console. I hear lots of people calling it a console. It's not. Consoles are a very locked down, curated experience. Valve have been very open saying we can do whatever the hell we want with this, which is pretty cool. But I understand why people think it's a console. It's trying to give PC gaming that console dashboard experience it's very user friendly to navigate which is kind of cool if we wanted to split hairs we'd technically call it a portable steam machine if you don't know what it is that's fine they're very short-lived valve wanted to do dedicated pre-built gaming pcs instead of using windows as an operating system they come up with their own operating system called steam os based off linux it ultimately failed because of game compatibility uh, linux playing windows games was very troublesome and we thought it was all over with and then steam came back uh, with the Steam Deck. They've doubled down their efforts with SteamOS. That's gone from Debian to Arch Linux. They've worked on the Proton compatibility layer to get Windows games working in Linux. So there's still some games that won't play because of anti-cheat software, but they're doing really well. At the time of making this video, there's 5,000 verified games. Many, many more than that are also playable. So this is very exciting, not just physically for what it is as a portable gaming device, but also what it means for gaming on Linux and Steam machines coming back in a big way. So uh, yeah, I'm actually quite excited about it. So I'll just to tell you what my Steam Deck is, because there's three versions of it. Uh, it basically comes down to the amount of internal storage. I've got the top specs, so I've got 512 gigabytes of internal storage, an anti-glare screen, a slightly snazzier uh, carry case. I've got it plugged into a USB-C dock, that's why the display isn't on. It's kind of a pig to capture video footage on the screen itself. Uh, so with this USB-C dock, I've got HDMI out to my capture card. I've got some extra USB ports. We can plug a keyboard and mouse in. Just turn this into a little PC if you wanted to. Uh, I've got some other accessories as well. I bought an Anchor, I'm trying to remember what it's called, PowerCore Elite 3 power bank. So that does 60 watts charging, supercharging. So that can do my phone and tablets, my VR headset, the Quest 2, as well as charge this. So depending on what you're doing, you can get through the battery pretty quickly. Uh, so it's not necessary to have that power bank, but it is a, a useful accessory to have. And I've got a selection of SD cards as well. So let's get into the cool stuff. I'm going to start off with multimedia software because I don't really see anybody else talking about it, which is a bit odd. Now, the downside we have with the Steam Deck is it doesn't have a kickstand built in like the Nintendo Switch. We can't just easily prop it up. Now we can remedy that. We can buy them. Uh, they're meant for mobile phones. You just stick it on the back. So we can do that. And if you want to just prop it up, that's cool. So we're going to show off Cody. I've changed the theme. I've skinned it a little bit to give it its retro gaming feel. We're not going to spend too long in here. I just want people to be aware. There's no content given to us, we have to supply our own. So you can see I've added in Amazon Prime and Disney Plus, Netflix, My American Cousins, I know you've got Hulu and these other services. I'm pretty sure they're catered for through third party add-ons we can install. I'll do another video about Kodi on the Steam Deck in the future. Now those of you wondering why I'm doing this through Kodi and not for a browser like Chrome or Firefox, because it is a PC, I just don't like the Netflix user interface on the web page. I don't like it on the Android app or on my Android TV. So I like to come into Kodi to have all my multimedia stuff catered for in one place. We can quickly mention Plex. Some people like to use this. They do like a lifetime subscription or you can do it on a shorter basis. But its main selling point is that you run a media server at home so you can access all of your content when you're away from home, whether you're at work on your break and you want to watch a bit of a TV show or you're on your holidays. So it's kind of cool. I've got the add-on installed here, but we can do uh, the Plex software installed as well if you want to do that. So we've got videos, so I can come in here and go to files so I can have stuff on an SD card, I could plug in on the hard drive and access them that way. Um, we can then tell Kodi where these files are to add to the library. So when we do that, it will scrape the internet to get the metadata and all the artwork so it looks kind of like a Netflix experience. So all of this stuff is on a rather large hard drive I've plugged into my Wi-Fi router. So wherever I am in the house or out in the garden, I can access these movies or TV shows. So there's the TV shows. 
I've got some classic cartoons for my friends' kids to watch because they won't have seen this. It's pretty old stuff. A bit new and exciting to them. The other thing I'll just quickly mention is I've got a HD Home Run TV tuner. TV Aerial goes to that. That plugs in my router to give TV channels around the house on the network. Now, normally I'd enable this in Kodi, the PVR plugins. Uh, if you do that, because we're using the Linux version, Kodi just crashes. Apparently, it's a known issue on Linux. Hopefully, they can fix this in the future. Software updates. Uh, but I just want people to be aware at the moment it doesn't work. Yes, technically, I can install the Windows version of Kodi and use Proton to get that to work in. So I tried that. Yes, it fixed, fixed the PVR and I could do the HD Home Run. But then I had problems accessing my stuff on the NAS network attached storage. So, uh, yeah, I've just stuck with the Linux version. I've done even more add-ons through the Kodi repository. I've got internet radio, so I can do local radio. I can listen to radio stations the other side of the world, which is kind of cool. Mixcloud is different genres of music. We've got our favourites, so you can easily add add-ons here. You don't need to put them onto the main menu and uh, add these backdrops. I just like to do it because I'm a tart. Uh, we've got settings, so we can do a video in the future. We'll show you how to install themes and, and get it all set up. And then we've got our power menu so we can quit and reboot. So we'll come out of Kodi. Don't want to spend too long in here. I think what we really want to talk about is playing games. That's what people are most interested in. So what we're going to do, I'm going to push the Steam button and go into the store. Now, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't really like this user interface in the gaming mode. Um, it works, but there's a little bit of jank to it. We can go into the desktop mode, and that's what I'm more used to using, uh, having a computer desktop and using the Steam client in there. But we've got the option. Uh, some of you won't use Steam. You don't know what it is. You're not PC gamers. You might just have a console and you're thinking, oh, I'd like to do PC gaming. Maybe I should get a Steam Deck. So one of the things we need to point out on PC, we do not pay subscriptions to play online and games come on sale an awful lot. So let's let's just have a look what we've got. So there's Spider-Man Remastered, brand new game, £50, and it's got a green tick, it's verified, it should play very, very well on the deck, at least 30 frames per second, but it's £50. Now what I could do, so I'm interested now, I'm going to wish list it, and then Steam will tell me when it comes on sale down the road, because it's all about the sales. They'll do it at the weekend, they'll do publisher sales, they'll do uh, winter and summer sales, so I should be able to go down there's the discounted tab. I find it's much easier to do on desktop mode, but we'll struggle through. So there's Sekiro, it's got 50% off. It's hardly a new game, but it's still very cool. But I've got it, plays very well on the deck. You can tell it tells me it's in my library. F122 has got 35% off. Hitman 3, that was on sale the other day. Uh, instead of £50, it was 20 So these sales will change all of the time. So we also mentioned this websites like Humble Bundle. They'll do bundles of games. You'll get a key that you can redeem on Steam. So you can, as an example, get 10 games for like £10. Uh, and you can actually get some pretty recent stuff as well. It's a pretty cool website to check out. So let's come out of the store and we'll go to my library. I'm going to go all the way across to great on deck. So I've got nearly 300 games. It's telling me of those 300 games, 74 of them are great on deck. They're verified. They've got that green tick. It means it should be a seamless experience. It's as if it was made to play on the device. We'll get at least 30 frames per second and we should be able to enjoy the experience. If I go across all of my games now, we'll just press X so it brings up the filter. You can see we've got the green tick, which is verified. The yellow circle, the eye, and it means it's playable. And then we've got a question mark, which means it hasn't really been tested yet. And then we've got you know the diagonal slash, which just means it's unsupported. Don't put too much faith in this rating system. Uh, so green tick's obviously good to see, but we'll just explain what playable means. So there's Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. That's playable. And when we check in the game info, we can go details. So for Fallen Order, it's simply because a launcher comes up for Origin for a few seconds, and other than that, it's fine. Uh, but for this Assetto Corsa, it's telling me some functionality is not accessible when using default controller configuration, requiring use of the touchscreen or virtual keyboard or community configurations. Uh, the game sometimes shows mouse, keyboard, or non-Steam Deck controller icons, 
and we've got entering text requires bringing up the on-screen keyboard so we've got to hold steam and press x together to bring up the keyboard so you know not a seamless experience but it says everything's easy to read the text and the game plays well on the default setting so this will vary from game to game to game even games that say they are unsupported um, actually quite often we can get those to play too so it's telling me this runs on uh, steam play we've got proton 704 if we go back so we've got our little gamepad icon so we've got the steam input there's lots of controls on this we've got these track pads we've got paddles on the back and the normal keys and sticks we're used to on a gamepad we've also got gyro as well where we can tilt it around so it's telling me what the recommended layout is but we can go to templates so i can say uh, gamepad with gyro so the tilt support we can have the trackpad work as a mouse we can have it work as a joystick and so on and there's com community layouts as well so we can create our own and share them online or we can download uh, presets people have made so we can see these icons are meant for the steam controller it'll be a different icon that looks like the steam deck if it's made specifically for the steam deck so do a whole other video about steam input it's quite involved but just know you don't need to go down that road you can just use profiles other people have made and it'll tell you how many hours they've spent on that game so you know if they're you know using it and it's, it's serving them well we've also got the cog which is for settings so we can go to properties so we've mentioned the compatibility and using proton to get windows games to work in linux so it said 704 for Assetto Corsa but I can change it we can do Proton Experimental this is getting improved all of the time I've also installed GE Proton so I found that's got some unsupported games to work there was Lego Lord of the Rings it wouldn't work on the Proton versions but when I did GE Proton it played just fine so if you're impatient and can't wait for the official Proton to be updated we can use this community made version the GE Proton so let's go back to our games and we'll show what I've got installed on the deck. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just unplug the SD card that I've got in there. Show that's hot swappable. So it's now telling me there's 12 games installed on my internal storage. These games aren't particularly big. This job is just meant like a tutorial to learn the controls. It's kind of short but it's very funny. Uh, Demio, a top down RPG game, tabletop game. Doesn't use a lot of space. I've got Pinball FX there. Let's do Pinball obviously. Tunic, quite a cool game. But again, very small in size. It's not taking up a lot of the internal storage. So I've just always got something to play, and I pick up and go games. So if I put my SD card back in, now what I've done is I've got quite a few SD cards and I use them for genres of games. You don't have to do this. Some people only play one or two games at a time, really focus on them. As I had a few SD cards, so I thought, well, I can do one for my third person games and so on. So we can see now we've got Devil May Cry has been added I've got Dragon's Dogma, Elden Ring, God of War, some of the Lego games, Mad Max, Metal Gear Solid, Phantom Pain, Resident Evil, and so on. So let's just load a game up so you can see. Now this is a 512 gigabyte A2 U3 class card when we first load the games it might install some scripts it takes a little bit longer to launch the first time but we want to load the games once we've installed them because to do it in offline mode you often need to have run it the first time some games do require online internet connection even if it's single player it's down to drm that's on a game per game basis it's really down to the developers not too much valve can do about that see uh it should load pretty quickly and i think the secret to that is shader caches i'm losing about 30 gig of internal storage all of these games are going to these shader caches on the internal storage and i think that's the secret to getting things loading so quickly so there's elden ring so we'll just continue my game My brother came around the other week it blew his mind he plays this on his playstation i've had it on the pc for a while but he, he saw this running on the Steam Deck. He's like, that actually looks really good. And it plays really, really well. So let me just show you a bit of gameplay.
on him for the backstab. Right, so I've got the quick access menu we can bring up on the right hand side. Go down to the battery. So we can bring up the performance metrics. So you can see how much of the GPU has been used, the CPU, the battery life, uh, what the charge is or how much, uh, if we're charging, or how much we're dissipating. It'll give us an idea of how many hours we've got left. So big games like this, you might get two hours max. Other games, you can get much, much more. It really depends. So what I want to do, we can see that I'm not getting a lock 60 frames per second, nowhere close. And we've got that green line that's, that's very, very, very jaggy. So if I go to the frame limit, and go 30 frames per second and this is on a per game basis so we'll always do this for Elden Ring. So if we've got other games that will do 60 frames per second we can actually drop the refresh rate, get it down to 45 or 40, can actually give us maybe another 30 minutes of battery life and actually playing at 40 or 45 does feel very close to playing at 60 frames per second. Now we've dropped it to 30, we should get a more consistent experience. Right, so that's Elden Ring. We'll get rid of the the overlay. So the other thing that I want to show is that I do have a gaming PC and I can stream those games to the to the Steam Deck. Now I could do that playing on my sofa or I could dock it, I could plug it into my television. I've got Bluetooth, so I've got other controllers, I've got fight sticks, so we could do two player games. Although my PC's in another room, in the office, we can play these games in my living room. So I'll go to my favorites. So we've got games like Mortal Kombat. I know this will load pretty quickly. So for me to install it, it's nearly 110 gigabytes, but I've already got it on the PC. So we'll just go Hot I One which is my gaming PC, and we'll play it. So there's other games like Destiny 2, which we can't play on the Steam Deck because of uh, the anti-cheat software. So we can get around that because I've got it on my PC. I can still play it on the Steam Deck. When we do this, because we're not playing the games natively on the device, we get better battery life as well. It could be like six hours or more. When I was playing a game that's quite graphically intensive, I said you could get an hour and a half, maybe two hours. So how well this works will depend on your Wi-Fi at home. Cut practice. Scorpion. Sub Zero. So say I'm going to play this one player on the Steam Deck controls, but I could use a gamepad. I could set it up with another couple of controllers and do multiplayer if I wanted to couch co-op as we used to call it back in the day. Actually plays pretty well. So let's quit out. So the other thing we can do, I'm going to go to my collections, so I've got browser based, I've added in Project X Cloud. so if you pay for the Game Pass Ultimate subscription, we can stream games, think of it as like Netflix for games, so again I'm going to save battery life because this, how well this works really does depend on your internet as well as your Wi-Fi at home. But uh, yeah, it's cool to have it nonetheless. So if you don't have an Xbox or you don't have a gaming PC, I can't really recommend you spending £10 a month on this. Uh, what we can do is put Windows 11 on an SD card and we can actually have this use Windows. And then you, all these free games you get with Game Pass, you can then install on Windows, but you can't do that on SteamOS. But we can do the game streaming through SteamOS. So again, this is just on a per person basis. If you own an Xbox, 
you can you might have this already uh, so it's just something else we can do with the steam deck i have lots of friends that still play on xbox i don't do it anymore but i can still play the, the xbox games with them that's why it's worth me having the subscription hopefully we can get into the game soon So yeah, I can play with my friends online, or we can just do the single player. Now the image isn't going to be as sharp as if we played it natively on the device, you're going to get compression artifacts, that's, that's just how it is, it's a trade-off for the improved battery life. And show what it looks like. So I've locked this to 40 frames per second. You get the idea. Right, so that's the cloud gaming. The other thing we want to talk about is emulation. So there's a few ways of doing this. You hear people talk about retro deck or EMU deck. EMU deck's quite cool. It's not really software. The guys are very clever. They write scripts to get the deck to download the emulators, the software to play the games and set up the controls for them. It's incredibly, incredibly useful. And it will also do uh, emulation station, which is a front end. And they don't give us the games. We have to supply our own as well as the BIOS files. Once we've added them onto the deck, uh, emulation station can show them off. We can download the metadata and like video previews for it. So that's something to keep in mind is that that's going to use up storage. I could have every single Mega Drive game, but or the, um, Super Nintendo, whatever you're into, those games aren't particularly big. But once you start adding on the videos as well, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of them, and that's all going to mount up. So what I've decided to do is just focus on stuff that's more demanding that I definitely want to play. So I love the Amiga. I've put in quite a few classic Amiga games that I love. Of course, we've got the trackpad to work as a mouse. This was a classic computer. I did Daphne as well, which was laser disc games, just to try it out. But I don't play them too much, so I took it off. We've got a lot of the Nintendo stuff. So we've got the Switch there. So we'll do Metroid Dread quickly. Now, if you want to do Nintendo games, the best place to play them is on their own device, the Switch. But it's just to show what's possible. Uh, just because you see Metroid Dread playing doesn't mean that every single Switch game will play on the Steam Deck. That's just how emulation is. Things do improve over time. It's nice to have the option. You know, I'll just take one device out with me to do gaming rather than having a Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck. So this should do 60 frames per second. I think it goes down to 30 in the cutscenes. Loads pretty quick. A little tool tips before we get into the game. if you do the expert install of EMU deck it also sets up the gyro controls so if you want to play Zelda Breath of the Wild the Wii U version you can use the gyro as it's meant to be played
you get the idea. We might have got some frame drops, but as I say, it's, it's emulation. We're not playing it on the uh, official device. So what we can also do, if I go into the library, is the software gave us uh, Steam ROM Manager, so I can add those emulated games into my Steam library as collections. I actually prefer doing it this way because each game is treated as a game and we can do different controller profiles for it. So I've got the GameCube there. There's the Switch. I've got Multimedia, so I can get to Kodi. I've got the PlayStation 2. I've got the PS3, so on. So let's just do Metal Gear Solid quickly. So again, don't expect every single PlayStation 3 game to play. Uh, the first time you load them up, it wants to compile uh, this stuff. So it takes a little while, but once you've done it the first time, it loads in pretty quick. Absolutely love the Metal Gear games. So the fact that I can play like, the latest title, like Phantom Pain, and then go all the way back to the really old school side scrollers, as well as doing um, all the games in between on the PlayStation 1 and the GameCube. It's... Uh, kind of crazy can hear the Steam Deck's fan kicking up a bit now it's having to work hard pretending to be a PlayStation 3 Love the intro to that, such a nod to James Bond. So I do have a save game very early. So you just see what it looks like, having to go through all those cutscenes. Right, so we'll stop this before I get too engrossed. We can always do dedicated videos for gameplay at a later date. So one of the reasons that I do enjoy doing emulation is that if we want to download Steam games, I mean, we said Mortal Kombat could be 100 gigabytes, that's going to take a few hours to download, and I need to keep the Steam Deck on in order to do those downloads. So I can do that in the background, do the downloads, whilst emulating some classic games that I want to play. So uh, that's why I have them on the internal storage the emulation and install games onto SD cards mainly for that purpose. So let's finish off by going into the desktop mode. As I did mention earlier I do have an SD card that I've put Windows 11 on, it's called Windows on the go uh, so I can do Windows boot into that or we can do Linux. So using Linux isn't particularly scary uh, it's kind of laid out how you'd expect it to be. Like the, we call it the application launcher, but it's basically the start menu. And we've got a discovery store to install software. So we just give you a quick demonstration. I've added stuff into favorites. So boiler is for adding artwork when I do custom games into the Steam library. Bottles makes a Windows environment, essentially emulating Windows. Core keyboard's useful, uh, adds in uh, alternate keyboard than the one we get built in. We've got Discord there, some file manager stuff. Uh, flat seal is useful. It, it kind of think of it like root access. So for Kodi, I can say you can access any file or folder on the device at all rather than being locked to certain things. That's useful because we want to do add ons. So sometimes you download a zip file and that'll be in the downloads folder, but Kodi can't see that. By using flat seal, we can give it access uh, to pretty much anywhere we want to look. Uh, Lutris for doing other game launchers uh, like Origin and good old games, GOG. Moonlight is an alternate 
way of doing the game streaming from my PC because I've got the Nvidia graphics card. I've actually found the Steam Play to be perfectly useful. Um, you can load up Steam and Warpinator. That's a way for me to get files and folders off my PC onto the Steam Deck. Lots of ways of doing it, but that's quite a convenient way for most people that aren't that tech savvy. So we can see Steam is on the taskbar. So I did say I prefer this store. I prefer doing it this way than through the gaming mode. You see there's the specials. So we can see what's on offer. I've got my library. So we can redeem keys that we'd get, say, from Humble Bundle. So let's show that. We'll go internet browsers. So there's going to install Firefox, we've got Edge there which is how we're doing xCloud. Let's do Chrome. So we do have a microphone built into the Steam Deck, so what's kind of cool. Humble Bundle. So we can go to their website without having to type. Bundles of games. I think they've got one at the moment for Middle Earth and Lord of the Rings. Or is that gone already? Oh, there we go, Middle Earth. So I already bought this, but for £8.44 you get Middle Earth, Shadow of War, Definitive Edition, Shadow of Mordor, the game Gauntlet and its DLC. Lord of the Rings, Lego, Harry Potter. Yeah, we can pay what we want to pay. So if we do the £8.44, that will get us all of those 11 items. And then we can reveal the keys and redeem them in Steam. So there we go. So you've got to spend quite a lot of time in here when you want to do the really, really cool stuff. As I say, it's not a console, it is a PC. So we've got a lot of freedom. Uh, so there'll be more videos coming to show you how to get all this cool stuff done. So we'll leave it there. Have a great day, guys. Have a great evening, whatever you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I'll see you when I see you next. Ciao for now.